This is the Emergency Medical Minute. I'm going to talk to you about uh, blunt cardiac injuries. Blunt cardiac injuries, uh, as it says, uh, direct blow to the chest that results in damage to the heart. Most often motor vehicle accidents, sometimes auto peds, falls and sports injuries are the other most common mechanisms. Um, where do you think, what part of the heart is most likely involved in a blunt cardiac injury? What structure? So the right ventricle, because it's most anterior, so it gets the impact right uh, atrium, less so, left ventricle, less atrium, even less so, and then the, the septum and the valves and the coronary is very, very rare to be involved. Um, the, uh, the injuries uh, that we see typically are gonna be uh, screened by EKG. So. Uh, you have a patient who's in a motor vehicle accident, complaining of chest pain, took a blow to their chest, kids in sports injuries, especially hockey, baseball, and lacrosse. Uh, you always got to do that EKG to look for abnormalities. The things you're looking for is a new bundle branch block, some ST abnormalities, or arrhythmias. What do you think the most common abnormality of a rhythm is in blunt cardiac injury? The most common is just sinus tachycardia. Um, but you can also see things like atrial fibrillation. Now, you can uh, on occasion get a condition called ventricular fibrillation with a blunt cardiac injury. And it requires a really unusual and rare sequence of timing in which a hard object strikes the chest in the right place, right just milliseconds before the peak of the T wave. And when that happens, it's one of those R on T phenomena. That's why we sync our cardioversion so that so do we don't happen to discharge at that time. And then that can induce ventricular fibrillation. It's the second most common cause of cardiac deaths in kids after cardiac uh, hypertrophy. Um, the uh, the way that we do. The screening when we have patients is do the EKG. If you have anything that looks abnormal, do bundle branch block, ST changes, arrhythmias, then you should probably do an echo and then look at the patient. Now we can do bedside echoes here in the ED to look for wall motion abnormalities or clots or pericardial effusions, uh, any of those things that we find that we should be have a high index of suspicion for cardiac injury. Uh, anybody who has a, an EKG abnormality that is new from an appropriate mechanism should probably be admitted for continuous monitoring. Uh, transesophageal echo is a little more sensitive, but we don't do that. The, the cardiologists and the echo sonographers would have to do that kind of test. The last thing that some people do, and there's, it's a good test, but no one knows when to use it, is troponins. So patients who have an abnormal troponin, you know, you have to suspect myocardial injury. But there's no good data that tells you when you should draw it. So it doesn't say you should draw it immediately or two hours later or four hours later. But if you do admit a patient, you should follow serial troponins because an elevation is a, a good marker for blunt cardiac injury. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.